situation is different. Client, so say for example, and then this client is probably you've heard well, the their evidence have shown that they've stabbed somebody or they've literally hurt someone really badly, mm. and you have to sit in front of them by yourself. Doesn't that make you uncomfortable? How would you, that make you feel? Well, I have represented people who've been accused of committing murders and and some very violent, extremely violent crimes. But I've not. I'm. Firstly, you have to be quite brave doing this job. Mm-hmm. You can't be. You can't be um, nervous or mm-hmm. well. You know, we all get nervous. We're all human, aren't we? But you have to be confident. Yeah. And I I, I can't say I've ever met someone and be, been scared. And generally in life. I don't really feel intimidated <laughs> yes, by yeah, anyone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, have I, I was uncomfortable once, and somebody had been accused of murder, and he was a little he was a little unhinged, and he was very jumpy, and I was like, oh, oh, "This wow. is still by yourself of him." Yeah, oh, in wow. prison. This is what I'm um, saying. Wow. I can't. But you know there are there are prison officers around and you know you you've got the panic button and I just thought oh I need to get out of here quite soon, that, yeah. um, but that that was just one occasion and somebody else who had been accused of of murder I looked into his eyes and there was this sort of really cold icy look but he wasn't horrible to me in any way mm. but on that yeah. occasion I was like I kind of felt it you know and you feel someone's energy mm. and I was like oh. um, I represented him he was all right with me but I had that moment. So, yeah. That I must guess. be so, so just scary just sitting there thinking this person actually killed somebody else. Like, this person's done this crime and it's... it's if you're saying I, it right now, I feel paranoid for you just sitting there thinking... No, oh. I'm all right. Look, I'm there to help them. So they'd be foolish to kill me because then who would... Re- well, I guess they them. could get another representative, but then they'd be facing double the time. So yeah. it just doesn't make sense for them to do anything to me. And I, I suppose I'm on the right side of the table when it comes to the clients. So yeah. I'm not a police officer mm, or anyone that they've, got, yeah, or a prison officer. Well, not that, that they would be aggressive towards them, so to speak, but I'm saying they might have more of a reason to resent that yeah. particular figure, yeah. but I'm there to help them, so. Because I'm just imagining being in a courtroom and then the family people that have been more, like the, that, the person that's been killed is sitting across the room for you and you're now trying to represent this person and try to get them lesser time. Could you, I'm, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I have and sat in the old Bailey and I did sit across. Um, I was representing one of four defendants on a murder case, mm-hmm. which we actually, we won that case. It was a stabbing um, and three three of us, three of defendants were acquitted and one was convicted of manslaughter. Mm-hmm. But I remember seeing the mother of the victim across me and she was just rocking and she was crying. And, and usually I don't make eye contact, wow. but I was I hope she didn't see me looking. I didn't. I don't think I made it obvious. Did you but feel I bad couldn't in that stop I felt terrible, mm. and uh, I was one of four people that was. Well, I was representing one of four people that had been accused. So it wasn't just me looking at her and her looking at me. But I felt. I really felt for her. And then she'd lost her son. But I then heard she lost her partner six wow. months before. Oh wow! And she, the way she was rocking and she was wailing, I, I really felt for her. So yeah, yeah. I, I felt bad, but you know, th- what can you do? This this, this is what happens, yeah. 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 Another thing, talking about knife crime and stuff, um, have you seen an increase in knife crime in London? Especially oh, definitely, London? definitely. I mean, I think the last, in, in from, from what I, th- my view is four or five years, it's just gone crazy. When we were in school, you just have a fight. Somebody would just have a fight, you know. You know, you go, yeah. you go fight, and you'd probably be talking again like a week later. And it was like people would, you, you know, might push each other around or yeah. have a little punch up or something really minor. And yeah. now they're stabbing each other over the stupidest yeah. of things, and they are so young. And I think when I started out, my clients were sort of thirty, thirty-five plus, maybe twenty maybe 25 plus now i'm seeing 18 year olds i'm seeing 15 year olds i go into young offenders and they're babies and i'm thinking what are you doing what would you say to someone that's in that position probably right now just thinking Mm. should i like is this the right life for me does this really pay off do i can i come out of this it's difficult when you grow when you're growing up in a high crime area or you're a young um, impressionable youngster and you've got into a bad crowd um you know and I'm, if you've grown up in a certain postcode, then you've got issues with another postcode, mm-hmm. then your safety is to stay within your group and to 
follow what they do. Yeah. So it's um, it's difficult for, for youngsters growing up in that environment. Of course I would say, don't do it. You're going to go to prison. We'd all say that, wouldn't yeah. we? But sometimes the circumstances um, are easy. more complicated than that. And if they're not with that group, they're on their own. So it's safe for them to have gang affiliation yeah. or be in a gang for their own protection. And it's dangerous out there right now. So that they may choose that lifestyle simply yeah. because they feel it's safer for them and there's no other... They can't see an, any way out of it. But yeah, of course well, we Are say. there other way out of there? Because if you're, if you're from a postcode and do you have to support your postcode, do you have to do those things? Is there a way for you to do other things? I know it's easier said than done and the other people have grown out of that though. But the only thing is, and I feel like even music mm. has always been said recently to promote violence as yeah, well. Yeah, there is, there is, there is music that does promote it. Yeah. But I mean, that's not the only cause of it. There are other factors that lead people to crime. Mm -hmm. um, would I advise against it? Of course, I was would because I know what the consequences then are. That would give you less job, less work to work on as well. No, I give my work. clients lectures. I mean, you know, sometimes I wonder why they instruct me because I will go in and give them a full blown lecture at some point. I might. Like, well, your that. lecture is coming especially if they're particularly young but no all of them i say what are you doing with your life mm. especially if they're young so i might like, stop what i look they may listen to me they may not but you know mm, i do feel sure. that i must say you're wasting mm. your life yeah just stop it this is ridiculous some of them will look at me as in yeah okay whatever and then i'll <laughs> say yeah yeah we know we know we're gonna change and then we'll they'll be back again. again yeah so um so could them. you educate us a bit on um why artists are being banned from making music and how wearing a balaclava exempts them from the ban do you know much about that um again this would vary so yeah. one person may be stopped from me making music a different reason than another person i know of somebody who was released from prison for murder and was then said to be making music promoting violence so oh. he was on license and his probation officer said, you are not to do this. Oh, wow. it is, we're going to put it as a condition in your license that you cannot put this sort of music out there because you should not be promoting violence when you've been released from prison for a violent mm -hmm. offence. Mm -hmm. So wearing a balaclava would obviously, would obviously conceal their identity. That's why would you wear one? Because you want to conceal your identity. And then they can go and make music and hide oh. who they are yeah, from the authorities really so yeah, somebody it's else all about identity. that's part of a culture that they they yeah because what if they're just rapping about some what people they used find balaclavas are, are are cool yeah mm -hmm. I, I think people some may people may think it looks cool to have it i know someone uh, a, an artist who wore it in his videos and he had no reason to wear it he just wore it because he thought it looked cool he thought it looked cool but other people may not want their uh, there's another famous uh, rapper who's a university student, so I don't think he wants his yeah, identity yeah. revealed. Mm -hmm. So he wears it. So people wear them as for different reasons. Are you familiar way. with the six nine Takeshi six nine? I've heard stuff about it on the internet. Okay. I, I've caught, I've picked bits up, but there's an issue about him being Sniffing. an informant. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, how do you, how how do you feel about it? like if you've got a client who's looking at. 10 plus years and they're given a plea deal that like basically means they'll have to snitch on their friends would what would you advise them to do what's your best practice um i've only been in one interview where the police were aware that somebody was associated with quite prominent people and they made um, a suggestion that he could contact them if he wanted to give information wow. and that's not usually something i would get involved in yeah um, if somebody wants to give information, that's they do it off their own back, and it's not something I would put into place. Mm -hmm. And the officers gave him their details so he could contact them directly. I then asked him afterwards. I said, "Oh, you know what? What? What are your views on that?" And he went, "Oh, no, no, no. I'm not talking to them. Nope, I don't want to talk about." It. I said, "No, I'm, I'm not saying you should. I'm just yeah. asking what your view is." And he was dead against it. And I found out at the end of the case that he had actually spoken to the officers without me oh, being wow. informed. He was given 10 years in prison. Well, no, well, the judge announced 10 years, but he was out in two. And often wow. they announce a certain wow. sentence in the courtroom so it doesn't look unusual. Oh. And then they're let out through the back door with a new, possibly a new identity Absolutely. very early, maybe a year or two into the sentence. It's not a set time, but a very early. So the, the thing sentence. with the Takeshi thing, why it's like 
a big thing is because obviously he was glamorizing this gang life that he wasn't really about. And then obviously now where he's looking at a long time, mm. he's snitching on everyone. So what people are saying is if you were if you were committing the crime, you shouldn't be able to just start writing if you're a mm. part of the streets. Well, that is the, that, that is the code. That is the code. You don't talk you don't speak. Mm. Um we don't we're not there to facilitate things. As lawyers, we're there to um advise a client on the evidence and and, mm. and, and how to um the best way to move forward with their case. We're not there to as a go between with them and the police and to start facilitating deals i might we might assist them with a deal in the courtroom so for example if it's a, a a gbh case um and we might say to the prosecutor oh my client's willing to plead if you reduced it to abh for example that's the sort of deals we get involved with the prosecution okay. but as far as arranging deals with talking to the police that's not really something i've been involved in now it's down to the individual what way they want to go it's reviewed very dimly you know um in the criminal world if they really? speak to the authorities of course because if you're considered a snitch mm. there's a there's a negative mm -hmm. stigma attached yeah. to mm. that isn't there in the criminal world it's mm. considered oh, the yeah, ultimate yeah. betrayal so mm. that is a decision that's down to the individual mm -hmm. so if if your client said to you i'm prepared to like tell some information to get me a lesser time is that something that you would well, encourage. you know, I, I wouldn't encourage, say, oh, yeah, that's great. Go and tell on everyone. <laughs> like, yes, let's do this. Like, um, <laughs> but um, I, I would say, well, you know, these are the of the, the officer's details. If that's something you want to do, that's something, you know, but you, you would have to do. Involved. No, I mean, the, the most we may do is say this client wants to speak to you, but we, we do not really get involved in that mm. side of things. That's the client's personal decision. And he then has to communicate with the officers and and as i said in the one case where my client did do that i wasn't even aware of it till the end of the case so okay, what about a situation where you've maybe there's multiple defendants and you know that your defendant wasn't as involved as the others would you kind of advise your defendant to speak up more about what the others have done there's ways of presenting their cases without getting anybody else into trouble mm -hmm. so if they for example there's a large drug uh, drug supply ring mm. And then there's like levels in the ring. There's sort of the, the top guy, the middle yeah. guy, the lower guy. Usually the evidence will show that. The evidence will show, oh, he was just a street dealer. Yeah. And he just used to go and, you know, sell this, this and this. So he's considered low level. Mm -hmm. Whereas when they look at the top guy's phone, they'll find that he may be involved in importation or things on a much higher level. level. And that will come out itself. We don't have to say so-and-so's done more and so-and-so's done even more there's mm -hmm. ways of saying well actually in the grand scheme of things my client was only a street dealer so we would like the judge to sentence him with, with within this sentencing range mm. so we don't have to point fingers and that's yeah, usually called a cutthroat and, and yeah. it's not a good way to conduct cases because it doesn't help anyone mm -hmm. so no we don't usually point fingers at others there's there's better ways of doing it have you ever had a case where someone's actually not the one that that's done it but they are taking the rap for it that's yes. what i basically meant like, yeah yeah if you know that they weren't the one that did it they're not going to say anything but the other person did would you encourage them to speak up and say that it wasn't Whatever we say to them, we, we will advise them in their best interests. Mm -hmm. And we would say, um, you know, you, you have no need to plead to this because the evidence against you isn't that strong. So we would encourage you to go to a trial. But if they're being threatened or pressurised to plead guilty, then whatever we say doesn't mean very much to them because yeah. the consequences would be far worse mm -hmm. Could you if they it, didn't. Though, if you feel like they have been threatened or you feel like something... That's might... not our place. We, yeah. We're not... We, we're, you know, look, we... Who would we report it to? The police? The police, maybe? If you No. You, you know, no, I mean, no, I'm just sort of speaking out loud. No, that's not something we would do because we don't get involved with that. You know, that's where we start crossing lines. We don't... Mm -hmm. If that's that's mm -hmm. what they've chosen to do, that's their choice. Mm -hmm. It's not... It's not for us to then go so and start reporting people. you can only advise them on their people. choices and what they choose to want to. Well, exactly. Yeah. We can advise them on what to do, but whether or not they take our advice is down to them. We that can only advise point. clients. The, the ultimate decision lies with them. Mm. So if they want to take the rap, they take the rap. Um, just going back, because you mentioned that you wouldn't work with rapists. I wouldn't say I wouldn't. I, I would just say it would be my preference not to deal with mm -hmm. those particular cases mm -hmm. okay. involving. Are there any other cases that you would say you would never like look into? 
I, I tend not to do sex cases. I have done in the past, mm -hmm. but I tend not to, to do them as a consultant. Um, I, I don't do very many. But if somebody comes to me and says, look, I've been accused of this and I promise you I'm innocent, then, you know... Have you ever needed to you, reject you, any cases? I wouldn't. Before? I wouldn't say. I wouldn't take any on. I'd say you know it's just not often I do. Mm -hmm. Have I? Have I rejected a case? Yes, I have. I. Uh, I have refused to assist somebody. Why? Um, because I, I was. Firstly, it was. Uh, it, it was. It was one of the. It was the most disturbing case I've ever come across, where a man s complained to me that he. Um, was on a license that was too long and I was in the process of moving firms so I was like look I've got quite a lot on right now so I'm not sure if I can assist you so he said oh no you know would you just hear me out I said I'll hear you out I don't know if I can help and he said oh my license is too long so I said well send me the paper he'd been released but he didn't like the fact his license was for too long mm -hmm. so I said send me the um, case summary and some other documents so I read through it and he had gone to prison for filming his wife having sex with their son. And it started when he was six. And they, or was he six or nine? Anyway, it went on for some time. Mm. But he was filming her having sex with their son and she was having sex with their dog. So it was just vile. And on top of that, they were filming the son and passing him around in a ring. Mate. So wow. the judge said that, wow. and I read his comments, he said, everything you were meant to protect, protect that child from, you did to him. Yeah. And he was aware he was being filmed. So I don't know how he became aware or was aware. but um, He was aware? Yeah. The, the judge said the child was aware he's being filmed. You're meant to be protecting so your child. For a child. Could you imagine That's that? such a young age as well. And his own mother, and she claimed, oh, the father had pressured her how can anyone oh, pressure please. you into that doing that to your child and i thought you're you're on a license you shouldn't even be on the planet mm. right for yep. doing that yeah do you think they should bring the death Sorry. penalty to the uk the death penalty is it was abolished many years ago because they felt there was better ways of of killing someone as punishment okay they they felt there was other punishments that were more suitable and also you have to remember if they get it wrong or there's yeah. a miscarriage of justice someone's yeah. lost yeah. their life now it's all very well for us to say oh someone should be killed for that when we're really angry like for what i just told you mm. so you might feel really angry and think oh you know he deserves a death penalty some mo m many people may agree with that but uh, i don't think it should be brought back and i think there are far more effective ways of dealing with crime than just killing someone although in extreme circumstances some people might think just get rid of them. <laughs> get them off the planet. We don't want them here. Yeah. But no, I don't think we should. Um, what do you think of Kim K becoming a lawyer? Um, she'd have to go through the process. Well, if she, I, I would much prefer being a lawyer than doing plastic surgery <laughs> all the time. <laughs> but I think she's doing good things by helping people mm -hmm. get out of prison, and, and I respect that. Mm -hmm. But if she, she, she continues to do more things like that, I would like her more yeah. as a person. Okay. Do you feel like she's <clears throat> kind of mocking the justice system though? Like making it look easy, I can just transition from this to that because of who I am. I'm glad she's using her position to do something valid and yeah. worthwhile rather than just being naked and getting loads of surgery done, which is just pointless and annoying. But um, I also think that there are, she's got things, it's for self, self gain as well to yeah. make herself look good. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm not going to knock it. I'd rather she did that than yeah. the stuff she usually does. So good on her. Well, let's round it up. Um, just let people know where they can find you. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm. You know, in, you can find me on the internet, Miriam Altaf. Um, I'm on Google. I'm at Carson K Solicitors. I'm also on Instagram. So yeah, just type me into Google and you'll find me. Google me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.